Welcome. Let's take a look at finding Faraday's law, the path integral form for finding the electric field inside of a solenoid. So we have here a solenoid, and we can then find the magnetic field from the solenoid is that it will have a constant magnetic field inside with relation to space. But we are going to say that the magnetic field changes with time, that it's ramping up, ramping down, something like that. So what we can say, and what we found from Ampere's law, is that our magnetic field is mu naught n i as a function of t z hat for radiuses less than the radius of the solenoid. And then our magnetic field will be zero for radiuses larger than the radius of the solenoid. And so for Faraday's law, looking very, very similar to Ampere's law, except instead of current that we are enclosing, we are enclosing an amount of changing magnetic field. So if we wanted to find the electric field inside, we would have a Faradian loop very similar to the Ampereian loop that we had for Ampere's law. If we wanted to find it outside, which we will do in another video soon, we would have a Faradian loop outside, which would of course look something like this in this case. So just for the inside for this video, we want to of course right, define our Faradian loop as having itself a radius r. And then we can look at both sides of this Faraday's law equation. So in this case, our closed integral of e dot ds for this loop is just the integral of e times the ds of this, which is going to be r theta. But our electric field is going to be in the same direction as our loop because we chose it. So we just get E times, right, for a full loop, 2 pi r. So because we chose the loop that's going to have, right, an electric field in the same direction as all this, everything's good with that. And then over on this side, we first want to find what the integral of d dot dA is. It is our integral from zero to the radius of the uh, radian loop of our magnetic field, mu naught n i of t. And then our dA is the dA of a circle as we build up these rings, which is, as we saw before, 2 pi r log. So our mu naught n i of t is all constant in space because it's a solenoid, so we can pull it outside of the integral. And so we can just do the integral of dA of a circle. We could also write out the dA of a circle from 2 pi r of dr. So we get that our integral of b dot dA is equal to our b mu naught n i of t times the area of our circle, pi r squared, and then our negative derivative of b dot dA is we look through here and we find out what we need to take a derivative of. Mu naught is a constant. That's not going to change with time. N is the number of turns in our solenoid, the turn density actually. That's not going to change with time. Pi and the radius of our solenoid are not going to change with time. It's just this I of t that's going to change with time. So we get this minus sign from here. Mu naught n pi r squared times di of t dt. So now what we can do is we can combine these two. So I have e times 2 pi r is equal to negative mu naught n pi r squared di of t. I can do a little bit of cancellation here, my 2 and my pi or just the pi, sorry, the two remains the same. 
and I can cancel the r, so I cancel pi here and r to one power here. And so in this dot product, I'm saying that my electric field is in the tangential direction. So my electric field will be mu naught n r over two times di of t dt in the theta hat direction. for radiuses less than the radius of the cylinder, of the solenoid. So if we look at this, we can look at how our electric field changes with distance. And we see that our only dependence upon distance is the radius to the single power, so that we have then the straight line until we get to A. And then we can then, in another video, find out what it looks like past that.